75 days in the wake up for us to prove what Americans can do when the pressure is on. 75 days in a wake up for us to show that true patriots do not whine and complain. We put our heads down and we get to work. 75 days and a wake up to build a future that those who came after, those who came before us hope for and those who come after us that they deserve and 75 days and a wake up to elect a leader who is willing to believe in the best of us and that leader is Kamala Harris, the next president of the United States. That is Maryland Governor Wes Moore speaking last night here at the United Center in support of Vice President Kamala Harris. And Governor Moore joins us now here in Chicago. Governor, great to see you. Great to see you, too. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Um, Can we talk first just about the vibe in this place over over the last week and over the last month, really, of this campaign and how things, quite frankly, have changed, which was— there was a talk after the debate, should Joe Biden stay? Should he get out of the race? A lot of people thought he should stay and let's hang in with him and see if we can't get him across the finish line. Just that energy within the party has changed and you feel it in this, as you felt up close last night. Yeah, I mean, th- th- this energy is real. And and I think what this energy is, this is an energy that's ready to win. And there is a difference. There's a difference between folks who actually see and believe that victory is within reach, because it also means that you have folks here who are ready to do the work. I mean, the, the great thing about being here right now is not just that you're, you know, the rallies are great and the energy is wonderful and everything is really loud. It's the fact that these are all people who are now going to be going back to Indiana and Mississippi and Missouri and Maryland and are go and who are ready to go put in the work. That's the thing that you want to see coming in, especially when we now only have, you know, now 74 days in a wake up. You know, one of the, the things that's notable, and we're looking at these USA signs in the, in the photos here, and we've been talking about a lot this week, is talking about patriotism. Right. And you've kind of been at the forefront of that, going back to your campaign saying Republicans don't own patriotism just because right. you've got a bigger flag and you wave it on the back of your truck or, or put a sticker on your truck. It's about embodying the values of the country. You, of course, served in Afghanistan with the 82nd Airborne. How important is that to you and to this party to talk about patriotism in a different kind of way? I think there was a real danger that we had as Democrats of shying away from it, uh, of being afraid to put the American flag, you know, in your in your yard, uh, a, a fear of saying I'm a very proud American. Because the thing I wanted people to know is that saying that I'm a proud American and I love my country, I love this flag, I have fought for it, and I will fight for it for the rest of my life. I think it has been the world's greatest experiment. I also know this: that doesn't mean I'm naive. That doesn't mean I'm ignoring our history. Our history has been very uneven. I get that. And the thing that I know I really wanted to speak to last night were the skeptics, were the people who said, listen, how can you love America if X, or how can you love America if Y? My point is this, I'm not asking you to parking lot your skepticism or your, or your, your, your you know, a measure of cynicism you might have. All I'm saying is, let the, bring, that, bring that skepticism with you, but let that skepticism be your companion and not your captor. Don't let it don't let it remove you from the process. Let it actually be your fuel to continue making this great American experiment better. That is patriotism. The people who are willing to sacrifice for a better America, the people who are willing to defend the people to their left and the right, regardless of what their family lineage might be. That's the beauty of what makes America so special. And I think as Democrats, it's not just a smart political thing to do. It's the right moral thing to do. We love this country. We'll fight for it. So last night was Tim Walz's night. We learned about him as a a teacher, as a coach, his time in the military. You know him as a fellow governor, uh, Governor of Minnesota. You're Maryland. Tell us your experiences working with him. What do you think he adds to the ticket? I love this dude. I'm telling you, he's just, he is, like, the thing about Tim Walz is what you see is what you get. There's no errors with him. This is not performative. He, you know, he doesn't get up there and, and, and put on a show. He is Coach Walz whether he is in a back room or whether he is on a big stage. And, you know, one of the things I've always loved about him is not just his military service. I mean, this is a guy who's a, a 24-year military veteran, rose to the rank of sergeant major, which less than 1% of people do. Um, but 
I remember him even as President Biden was going through the process of thinking about what he wanted to do. I was having very in-depth and deep conversations with, with Tim Walz, and he was having very in-depth conversations with President Biden. And he would always stand there and say, but our job is to stick and be loyal and making sure that we're pushing forward the right agenda for the country. Keep the country first in this. And I love him for that, and I will stand with him always. I think he's going to be a remarkable vice president. Nico, we saw last night this party has fallen in love over the last couple of weeks yeah. with Governor Walz. Walsh. Governor sure. Moore says he, he saw it a long time before a lot of people did, which is this is a guy who can help the ticket and help the country. These governors are amazing, and there are so many. What a great and groundbreaking bench the Democrats have. When you look at California, Maryland, Wes Moore, your speech was amazing last night. Uh, Pennsylvania's Josh Shapiro and everything that he brings to the table, North Carolina, Massachusetts, the great Maura Healy, who's the first openly gay uh, female governor. And, Donnie, it just doesn't make any sense to me that Donald Trump would go after a swing state governor, a state that he needs to win at a time when it looks like his chances could be, could be in jeopardy. Donald Trump sent out an offensive tweet about Josh Shapiro calling him the highly overrated Jewish governor. Mm -hmm. Imagine saying a highly overrated black governor. He throws out these anti-Semitic tropes and said that he's not good for Israel. I'm so tired of Donald Trump dividing trying to divide Jews. 75% of Jews traditionally vote Democrat. I think they'll even hit it farther this time. It's vile, it's anti-Semitic, and I get offended as a Jew personally. Yeah. So, uh, Wes, Wes, let me go to you. Wes, first of all, congratulations on your great success, my friend. I mean, you are one Thank of the stars know. of the future of this party. So, what do you, you're out there, and are you feeling that the electorate is tired of the negativity and tired of the name calling and the very thing that's happening in the Democratic convention, the joy, the excitement, the exuberance, that's what people want across the aisle. I, I think this country by its nature is a, is a hopeful country. I think that this country is a, is a country that understands the power, that there's a healing power to American democracy. And when you look at the origins of it, that America was founded on this idea that every two or four or six years, depending on the race, we have a chance to choose our fate. And Americans generally choose hope. They choose optimism. They choose the thing that's going to lead us to our better angels. And I think that's exactly what we're seeing. And I think people are seeing that, you know, the, the, the shell game of, of Donald Trump is very tired. Uh, and it's very tiring. He is not a policy guy. He is a vessel. He is a vessel for an ideology that believes that, that patriotism means separating us. And that means making America great again is telling who should be a part of that experiment and who should not, who, who should not be. But Donald Trump is, is, is nothing more than a vessel for that. Uh, and I think people are seeing that we have a real opportunity to be able to have an economy that everyone feels a part of. We have an opportunity to have a country that is respected on the global stage. We have a chance to actually have a country that can do big and bold things and know that we need everybody involved in it. That's what the people are hoping for. And I know that and, and people believe and they know that Donald Trump is not going to get us there and he has no plan to get us there. That's not his intention. So this is actually an exciting moment because I think it represents what every single election represents for the American people, a choice about who we are and about who we hope to be. Governor, obviously Donald Trump denigrates immigrants whenever he gets the chance. One of the points you made in your speech last night tying it to the collapse of the key bridge after that terrible accident earlier this year was the people who were working on that bridge and what they saw in the promise of America. I remember um, even speaking to those families uh, and speaking to them in Spanish. Uh, that first morning when we were letting these six families know that we were at that point it was a it was a search and search and rescue mission and um, and then eventually turned into just a recovery mission and I think about those men often who were fixing potholes at 180 feet in the air in the middle of the night so we could have a smoother commute in the morning people who weren't born in this country many who didn't speak who did, who did not even yet speak English but who believed that the hope of America was big enough for the hopes for their families too. And um, one of the things that we actually did uh, in, the, in the wake of the collapse of the Key Bridge, we actually uh, established a, a scholarship for their children to make sure that their families and their children knew that we appreciated their loved ones, 
their fathers, their brothers, their uncles, their cousins. We appreciated their service. We appreciated their love of country and their love of community. And we were going to make sure that they, uh, that they weren't going to be forgotten nor left behind in this. Maryland Governor Wes Moore, who has served this country since he was, I think, 17 years old, right? That's right. Appreciate you being here this morning, Governor. Thanks Governor. so much. Thank Governor. you. Thanks.